into one journey. Let's make it count. Today, we are going to talk about true crime. And we link it in three ways. One, what does the Bible have to say? Two, what does the mental health community have to say? And three, the law of the land. Now today, we're going to talk about Bernie Madoff and Peter Madoff, the two brothers on Wall Street. But before we talk about Bernie, before we talk about Bernie and what happened, we want to say to the families, we deeply are so sorry for your devastating loss. It was a devastating loss to the family. However, let me salute the, the superhero or the superman of today's story. His name is Harry Marco Polis, a mathematician and a financial analyst and an investor himself. Now, Marco Polo, uh, Mr. Polis was approached by a friend to look into how does the Madoff brothers do it. And he started looking. Guess what? In five minutes, he said, fraud. In four hours of looking at all the mathematicians, the, ma the, the, math math the mathematical models, guess what? Fraud. So, it was a fraud all along. So, guess what he did? In May 2000, he reported it to the SEC, Security Exchange Commission. Nothing happened. In 2005, he reported it in October. He reported it in November in 2005 and also in December. Nothing happened. So then he went again and he reported it October 2001. Still waiting. Nothing happened. In June 2007, reported it again. Nothing happened. So guess what? He reported it again 2008. Finally, the SEC listened and looked into the Murdoff brothers very carefully. Now, I want you to know that the Murdoff brothers, they've been in Bill's business since 1960 to 2008 doing their little, they're doing their little investment. Now, if you have a company on Wall Street, if you're an investment company on Wall Street, if you have 19 people or below, you don't have to register. If you have 32,000, that's Bernie and his brother, you should be registered. They were not registered. They were not registered, taking people's money. What were they doing? A Ponzi scheme. What's a Ponzi scheme? That's when you have investors. Let's say we have three investors. The first investor drops his money. When the second investor drops his money, Bernie makes them think that the makes the first investor think, hey, you're doing good. You're making money. When the third investor drops his money, he gets the second investor's money. And guess what? The second investor says, yes, I'm making money. And when the third, he just started rotating and rotating. It was all a lie. It was all a lie. And that's why we thank Mr. Harry Marco Pellis for discovering the fraud. Now, the SEC did look into Bernie. And, but they didn't find any fraud. Why? Well, the Bible says no stealing, no false truth, no unequal balance. Your scales should balance. You shouldn't defraud children, family, and the community. And that's Proverbs 11 and 1. But he wasn't doing that. Mm -mm. He wasn't following the Torah. He had other desires that were stronger than him. So Bernie started having his babies. And his wife really wasn't part of the company, but she was home taking care of their two boys. When SEC came the first time, where's the money, Bernie? Show us the money. Bernie said, no problem, no problem. Bernie knew he had investors, he had salespeople called headhunters all around the country, in the United States, overseas in Europe, guess what? Pulling in that money. But those investors could not mention his name, could not put their name in his in their prospectus. Just get the money and give it to us. And he paid them well. And they did well. Bought in $50,000 client, $100,000 client, $1 billion client, two, $250 million client. Clients that, that were paying in all this amount. What was Bernie and his brother doing? Living the life buying whatever they wanted to do, 
<laughs> what just living a lavish life like I have made it. Remember, people trust him. He used to be the chair of NASDAQ. But when he left that, he decided to do other things. He and his brother. Now, they have, Bernie has like a secret kind of trust, right? He doesn't want his name mentioned. But when they came, and the, the SEC came and said, show me the money. Wow, this is the federal government agency, you know? We've got to be able to do it right. So he tells the staff, listen, don't worry. This is how I want you to approach them. Remain calm. Remain relaxed. Remain positive. And ask them, is there anything else we can help you with? Re brag about the company. Pretend you're somewhere else. Remove the stress from your face. Mm -hmm. And it worked. He says, act like you're not hiding anything. And guess what they did? They approved it. The bragging. Pr approved it. <laughs> approved it. The, the casual behavior. Oh, they have nothing to hide. They approved it. Guess who's still writing letters? Mr. Polis. He's still writing letters. So the SEC decide to look into this again. Fired. Terminated the first team. Mm, so sorry. Remember, he has 32,000 customers. Money's coming in from the United States and overseas. They sent a new team back. And they find the fraud. $64.8 billion a Ponzi scheme. He calls his wife, calls his two son, meet me at the house. Meet me at the house. They go over to their parents house and their mom's there. What's going on mom? Dad wants to talk to all of us. Family meeting. He says look my business has been a fraud. It's been a lie. A big lie. It's a Ponzi scheme and I'm going to jail. The brothers were overcame with rage. What? I referred my friends. I referred my professors. I referred my teachers. Everybody thinks that we, we stole money from not only the Jewish community, but far into Europe. The boys could not handle it. They did not speak to their father. They did not want their mother to speak to their father. But children have to understand she's married. For better or for worse, it's me and Barney. Excuse me. It's me and Barney. It's me and, um, and Mr. Madoff, period. And she didn't want to leave her, her man. She's, he's doing bad. She's doing bad. The kids couldn't understand that. They couldn't get that. Mark? He was not happy and he fell into a low place and committed suicide. Later, Andrew finds out he has cancer and he also dies. So here is Ruth. <gasps> my man's gone. My son's, my babies are gone. My son's gone. Andrew and Mark's gone. She is left to pick up the pieces. But you know who's not gone? Mm-hmm. His brother, Peter, he's still above ground. And they want to say, well, Peter had, listen to this. Peter had, um, how many? 4,000, about 4,000 investors. From those 4,000 investors, he had how much? $143 billion just from those 4,000 investors. And Peter was living it up. But guess what? He, did, he was given 10 years, and he was asked to return. He returned 500 million. Peter, 143 billion, and you're returning how much? Hmm. Yeah, Peter. So, Peter returns a small amount of money, and... The government asked Bernie to return 17 million. 17 million. They collected 10 and distributed six. 
the brothers. Ruth lost all her money and she was only left with two million. Two million to survive on. She's an educated woman, but she's been doing the doing the um the uh the wife. I'm at stay at home wife, take care of the kids, deal with society, deal with the local bills, you know, not in the business. How's she gonna live in two million? She found the way. Peter, he did his ten years, he did his time. But Bernie wasn't so lucky. He got sick and he died. Mark's dead. Andrew's dead from cancer. Bernie is dead from hypertension, cardiovascular disease. Yeah, that's what he died from. Cardiovascular disease and kidney disease. And he's gone. They said when he was in prison, he bought up all the things in the little store and then resold them. No remorse. You're still behaving badly. What does the Bible say? No unjust weights. No tampering with children, family, community. You don't go inside another family's financial assets and take it and steal it and pat yourself on the back saying, I am great. I am the smartest. No, you're a thief. And you got to give it back. But, you, but thieves don't give it back. They just keep going. And it's okay with God, so it's okay with them. And they keep going. And there's no remorse, no repentance, because you haven't given it back. You don't have a mind to give it back. Because you stole it and you were glad. We're not talking about Ocean 12 and, you know, Ocean 8 and Ocean 13. This ain't no movie. This is real people struggling. So the Bible says no one just waits. What does the mental health community say? Guess what the mental health community said? The mental health community said that he has a personality disorder. A personality disorder? He's a thief? Okay, so he has a personality disorder. And then the law of the land sentenced him to 150 years. He has to return at least $17.179 billion from the 64.8. He winds up dying in prison. He winds up dying in prison. Blood pressure, heart gave out, kidney gave out, and Bernie's gone. There was this rich man in the Bible, and he's like, oh man, I'm going to make buy more and more and more barns and stock up my wealth, stock up my wealth, stock up my wealth. How much do you need? Then the Lord said, your soul's going to be required today. How foolish are you? Your soul is going to be required today. How much did Bernie and Peter need? Was it the thrill? The thrill of deception? The thrill of lying? The, tr the thrill of false truth? And Ruth is left with just the grandkids. Ruth only has the grandkids. That's it. Remember, uh, Mark had two women. And he had four children. Why would you leave us, Mark? You shouldn't have left us. And Andrew had one woman and one child. It said that she was a partner. <sighs> the women are left behind. And these men are gone. His whole, it, it's just wiped out, gone. Judgment came to his house. Bernie Madoff. The Ponzi scheme. The Ponzi scheme, 1960. 2008. Just taken and taken and taken. This is our white collar crime story today. Um, you know, mental health just said, yo, oh, he's antisocial. He is a, um, a pathological liar. He is very convincing. He can persuade you. He's very manipulative. But the, set, but the one time, the last time the SEC, the SEC came, Show me the money, Bernie. He wasn't getting away with it this time. And his sons were devastated. Ruth, his wife, devastated. We want you to really...
think about if someone came into your family, someone lied to you and said to you, buy the Brooklyn Bridge. They're selling pieces of the Brooklyn Bridge. You buy that Brooklyn Bridge. Then you find out, oh, deception. I was deceived. I was lied to. Give me my money back and the money's not coming back. The money's not coming back. It's not coming back. What would you have done? What do you think the people should do now that their savings gone? Nothing to live on now. They have to move out their houses. They have to move out their apartments. They have to find assistance. The, the money that they had also helped their additional family. They were the rich one in the family that people can turn to. Now, they're busted. They don't have anything because Bernie just kept taking and taking and taking. If you know someone who's a taker, let me know in the description box. In the comment section, let me know. In the description box, I'm going to have all the videos so you can see it and some of the New York Times article so you can also see what happened in this family, how this family devastated so much. And they were coming from a Jewish community. You knew what the Torah said. You knew better. Please. Thank you for listening to our white collar crime, Bernie Madoff and P Peter Madoff, and seeing how greed overtook them. Now please like, subscribe, click that notification bell, and don't forget to leave a comment and share the video. Guess what I've got coming up next? We've got another white collar crime coming up, but guess what? Hmm, this crew is not going to face any punishment, and we're talking about the Central Park Five. The main prosecutor, the lead prosecutor, Linda Fairstein. Linda, 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 what happened? And that's what we want to know, what happened. Stay tuned and get ready for Linda Feinstein, the Central Park Five. What happened to the Central Park Five? Linda's crew sent them all to jail and they were innocent. How did she get this bad evidence? We don't know. Was she tricked? We don't know. But we're going to talk about it. Thank you for joining us today once again. Enjoy the rest of your day. And welcome back to True Crime for our next story. Once again, remember, thank you for joining us. And um, we have one journey, so let's make it count. Your actions have consequences. And please, have a great day.